our special intro, which is a word of warning. If you are coming here looking for illegal episodes of Jujutsu Kaisen, this is not that video. Feel free to click off. There is no free anime here. The name of the show is Shonen Archive. That does not mean that we are archiving every single anime. It is two dudes talking about every single Shonen Jump anime from the beginning of time to the end of time. That's what this is. You've been given your warning. Click off. It's okay. <laughs> Leave. And now, the intro can play. Hello everyone and welcome back to Shonen Archive. I'm Wokey and I'm here with Zen. Hello. What's Shonen Archive? Well, I literally just screamed it at the beginning of the intro. <laughs> so, no need to worry about that. But Shonen Archive is a show in which me and Zen watch all Shonen Jump anime. Currently talking about Jujutsu Kaisen. And then the other two are uh, Gintama, Kuroko's Basketball, and plans to do Yu-Gi-Oh! Season 0 for this month. But unfortunately... My work has decided to be all flippy floppy and weird due to the strike. So for the one week where it looked like, hey, we would have plenty of time to just talk about stuff, it turns out there's actually work for me to do, and I need money. <laughs> so I had to prioritize the money, but it's okay, because we still get to talk about Jujutsu Kaisen, because that's two episodes, and that's very easy to do. Ah, isn't that great, Zen? It is nice that there's something that you can do quick and easy. Yes, it is, and there's nothing... Now, unfortunately, usually when we talk about Jujutsu Kaisen, it takes about almost the length of the episode, which is why people get it confused for the for the anime, is that we talk about the single episodes <laughs> at the length of the actual episode. That's how much we love Jujutsu Kaisen. So, <laughs> let's get right into it and go into episode 36, Dull Knife. Go ahead, Zen, tell us what it's all about. Episode 36, so... Oh, wait, the, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Like, I forgot. Uh, last what? episode, there was a tiny mistake where we messed up, and we we both we both ended up saying that the thing that happens with Toji's body is that, for some reason, we said Toji got to keep his soul. That's not the case. They don't keep the soul. It's literally just the body. And then they'll talk well, about in more... Well, that's kind of the same thing. Yeah, well, the, listen. The, soul, the body is the soul. As far as they're concerned, when he shows up here, they 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 specifically say they just take the body, and they're not interested in the soul. And yes, we know that we can go into deeper conversations, but in terms of what the lady said, and at, at that exact point in time, what we know, they didn't go for his soul. They just went for his body. And then today's episode, we learned that didn't really stop anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay but i just needed to bring it up technically speaking last episode that we were incorrect we were jumping the gun a little bit <laughs> in terms of what was being said but yeah go ahead yeah now you can go with it i had to bring it up because someone actually said like hey that's technically you know it's like this i'm like you know what i will mention at the start and then we can actually go into it but i, I once you talk about this episode you realize yeah it's like what you said <laughs> the body of the soul basically one and the same sorry zen go ahead Okay, so episode 36, we see uh, Ichiji is, is fucked up. Um, Nanami is, like, remembering, and, he, and he's angry. He's, like, reminiscing about uh, before he was a sorcerer and, and whatnot. Um, Yuji and Megami break the curtain, finally. They beat the people to, to break through the curtain that's trapping people. Um... They end up finding the guy who got his shit rocked by Toji, and they're like, "All right, you know what do we what do we do with this guy?" And Megumi's like, "Okay, I will, um, I will get him out of here, and you go ahead and go forward." So Yuji's like, "All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that." Um, you and Yuji like goes up into the into the station that where Gojo was, and they kind of have like a a little bonding moment where they're like, be careful, what, yada yada. Mm. Um, the other team, which is Maki, Nobra, and one of the people in the suits whose name I don't remember, um, Akari Nita is her name, apparently. Yeah, it's from it's from that, uh, when we... Yeah, the, she was one of the people from the bridge yes. uh, arc. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, her. Yeah. I remember her. Um, it's Bridge Lady. Yeah. Get out of there, Bridge uh, they Lady. Go, to, yeah, they're fighting transfigured humans, and then there's uh, it's them, and also it's now Bito who is not helping at all because he's an old asshole. Um, 
they end up getting attacked by Haruta, who is the weirdo with the hand sword. Um, and he's like, oh man, I'm glad that I have a, a girl that I can kill because he's a creepy weirdo like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is after Maki splits off, so it's just Nobra and um, Nita that are together. Uh, he attacks them, and Nobra starts fighting him, and he kind of like throws his sword, which it has a little hand on it, and so the hand just like runs like the hand from the Adams family. Um, and it's just chasing her down with the sword blade, and it cuts her legs and makes her fall down. Uh, and then he runs in to go kill her, and Nobara is chasing after. Uh, he basically tricks Nobara into paying attention to uh, Nita instead of him, and then she gets cracked with uh, the the hand sword. It like punches her in the head, and it gives her a concussion. Yeah, she's yeah discombobulated. Yeah, exactly. Uh, she's got a concussion, so she can't really fight. And the guy's like, "Ha ha, you're gonna." You know, I'm going to kill you both or whatever. And he starts uh, stabbing Nita repeatedly, like, in the back and then down one of her legs. Uh, Nobra eventually gets to her feet and tries to fight a little bit, but really can't because she's all wobbly. And then the glass where they are shatters open, and it's uh, Nanami, who then walks in and beats the ever-loving shit out of this guy. And it's very satisfying watching him just beat the absolute dog mm-hmm. crap out of this dude. Um... He tries to want to run away. Nanami keeps grabbing him and just keeps beating him down. Uh, they go find the girl that got because she kind of crawled away in the chaos to hide, uh, and they go to get her. Meimei is up there and she runs into a ghetto. She's in like a subway tunnel. Uh, she runs into the fake ghetto slash Kenjaku. I don't think he said his name yet, but that's his name. Congratulations. Yeah, she's still trying um, to figure out what's going on. She's like, like I don't yeah. think that's actually... like not, the, the only person who should know is us and <laughs> Gojo, but he's sealed. Yeah. Um, he releases the smallpox demon, which is a really funny <laughs> demon to use. Um... And he's like, all right, if you can exercise the smallpox demon, I will fight you. And then he just walks away. Um, they fight for like a minute. And it uses a domain expansion and it like locks her in a coffin. And then she breaks out of the coffin and she's like, wow, how long has it been since I've been in danger or whatever? And then we cut back to Yuji, who is running around trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, we've got... Nanami with the two girls, who's like, you two, you know, stay here, you're wounded, get out of here. Uh, and Nan- Maki, or not Nanmaki, uh, Nobra is like, I'll go with you, and Nanami says, no. Uh, anybody who's weaker than me at this point would not be helpful. We're in for some serious shit now, so you need to get out of here. And then, Yuji is heading down some escalators, and he bumps into Choso, who is like, oh shit, it's Yuji, and then they go to fight, and the episode ends. Yeah, immediate Kill Bill music plays in the back of his head as he immediately gets ready to <laughs> to fight. Um, yeah, this episode this is really a uh, satisfying, good episode. Uh, we obviously we talked about it beforehand, but there was a little bit more stuff with uh, with uh, with Toji when he gets control of the body and he immediately fucking wrecks the old woman. <laughs> Just, yeah, he just gives her, like, the punch. <laughs> it just destroys her. Just, like, off-screen, completely fucking <laughs> destroys her, isn't he, for daring to give him an order. And he explains the thing about, like, yeah, the usually they don't take the soul, but his body's different. He's just built different, so, he, so now it's actually just him. <laughs> they've done a real bad job here, and they've unleashed something terrible into the world again. Uh, yeah, I really like this episode. Um, uh, this is a big, uh, Nanami sweep episode for me as a big fan. One of the, uh, again, like I've said previously, Nanami is my favorite character in Jujutsu Kaisen. So it felt nice to have him animated in such loving detail to the point where I was having like friends DM me going like, nah, man, they did something. There is something sexual going on with the way that they are animating Nanami in this episode. Yeah, it was, it was. You could feel the the artist was drawing with one hand for a bit. <laughs> yeah, there was a some definite uh, love and care put into every single screen that he had, especially when he held the dude's fucking. It works on so many good occasions because when he's holding the dude by the hair, it works great because you're like, this guy's about to beat this dude's asshole. 
wide open. And then for other people, they felt the same thing, but for a completely different reason. So it works great for both fight fans and for people who just love uh, to love a lovely man such as Nanami. So it felt real awesome to have this episode. It really was surprising to see, like, yeah, everyone was, like, blowing up with the love for Nanami. And I was like, yes. Thank you. Now that Gojo sealed, <laughs> I have the only yeah, one left. Get to, gets <laughs> yes. to uh, thrive a little. Exactly. Now that uh, <laughs> the main course is off the menu, here comes the side dish, and it's looking pretty damn good. And yep, it was great to see him, and especially the way that they—he's so fucking terrifying. The like silent anger. And actually, I don't know if it's, like, silent, but it's very, it's, like, silent anger that's extremely loud. The way he walks in and just is, like, not saying anything. And then he just, like, takes, like... He's, he's like, not yelling, but he's visibly pissed. Yeah, he's, like, wrapping his hand up, and he's not, like, engaging (laughs) with the dude at all. He's even uh, still trying to get some information. He's like, how many people did you come with? How many did you do that? He's like, what? And he's just like immediately beating the shit out of him with one attack. The, the, one of my favorite cuts of that is when the guy's like, what are you talking about? And then it just shows the anonymy like critical hit thing where it's like the ratio with the blood on it. And yep. he just punches him like straight in the face. He doesn't talk to him at all. It's so good, and uh, the ass beating is so good that literally he's, like, apologizing, and he's, like, hmm. Doesn't even say anything back, just literally just punches him, just gets shit done. It's so good. I also love that moment where he tries attacking him, and he's, like, eh? <laughs> there's, like, there's a fucking wall in front of me. What the hell's yeah, going yeah, on? He kicks him, and he's, like, ah. Uh. <laughs> yeah. So when he a- cuts him with the sword, and all it does is cut his clothing, it doesn't cut his skin. Yeah, exactly. It's like the Terminator. It's amazing. Uh, and just absolutely awesome. And then some other stuff that was going on. For some reason, I can't get over it, but every single time they cut to Meme, I always laugh because that hair is just it's more... Re- yeah, I, the hair is really bad. It's really funny. I don't know why. It, didn't, it doesn't seem off to me in the manga, but when you animate her walking with it, like, it's... <laughs> And the way it blocks her eyesight completely, except for maybe, like, the tiniest little half percentage of an eye. It's just uh, hilarious. And uh, I liked her moment where she popped out the coffin and then immediately was like, how long has it been? (laughs) This is, I don't know if it's great, but she seems pretty happy with it, Um, which is pretty fun. Uh, I also liked her trying to rationalize, like, "Is is this actually ghetto? Like, no. Are him and Gojo teaming up? And then she's like, that makes no sense. He could literally just kill us all. What would be the point? Yeah. <laughs> and then, he was like, did Gojo betray us? And then she was like, well, wait a minute. If he did, we just would have killed us all immediately. There's yeah. no point in him betraying us in some convoluted scheme. Yeah. We would all just be dead. Yeah, every single one of us would just be smoked. So that makes no sense. This just, yeah, she's just trying to put it together. And it seems pretty, it's, it was pretty interesting. And then also, like, the brief bits of uh, Nobara fighting, even though she is clearly losing. I just like that her main technique is that I'm going to beat you to death with a hammer. And uh, that's pretty hilarious. When she's, like, running at him with a single hammer, it really kind of brings it to the east. Uh, the idea of just, like, yeah, no, she's just going to literally be, she's that meme. We would have taken E.T. out back and beat him with hammers. <laughs> that's what she's going to do, and she's going to win. And unfortunately, she wasn't able to be strong enough for here. But still, it was funny to see her. And I did like that she had that one moment where it looked like he was going to try and get the sword. And she just, like, nailed it. And she's like, oh, no, 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 you're taking this ass beating. (laughs) You're 100% about to get this. So, real fun. Real nice episode. And it leads into the next one. How do you feel about it, Zen? It was good. It was really good. Uh, The Nanami beatdown was definitely my favorite part. Uh, Nanami is a very Mm -hmm. cool character who does very cool things. Yes, um, for sure. So it was it was nice seeing him do more cool things. He's one of those characters that, like you said, doesn't really get that much shine because Gojo exists. Yes. And now that Gojo's not here, he just gets to do really awesome stuff. Yeah, it um, does. I don't really like the sword hand guy either. He kind of is like, there's not... He's not like an interesting villain or anything, you know? He's just kind of like a guy. Jujutsu guys... Of, go ahead. He's just like, you know, they always have that one villain that, like, has to be creepy about women or whatever, because that's like, ha he's a gross little freak. 
Yeah. And I'm not a huge fan of gross little freak villains, so I'm yeah. I'm glad he got his shit rocked by Nanami. Yeah, and I uh, feel like that's the only reason they typically unless unless they're in My Hero, in which case they are one of the main heroes. But for the most one of the good guys, <laughs> they're one of the good guys who <laughs> gives a thumbs up and says, "Can't wait till you're 16." <laughs> that, that, that's the only time where this character is a good guy. Usually, they're here to get their ass kicked, and it's enjoyable to see them do it. Um. What do you prefer, creepy guy or raging misogynist? Ugh. Yeah, no, that's it's tough. a it's a Sophia's choice of bad options, yeah, but that's tough, man. <laughs> that's pretty brutal. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. But I feel like it's typically one of those two. And funny enough, Jujutsu Kaisen has one of two of them. I don't think we've met the the raging misogynist just yet, but he shows up later on i think if i remember correctly oh no i'm i'm similar to you i'm not really the biggest fan of those type of characters but when they're getting their ass kicked perfectly fine you just have to make sure that they actually get their ass kicked if they stay too long then it kind of gets annoying but he he lasts long enough and i also did like that they uh eventually did confirm that the dude um that i thought had died previously is like no he he lived he was he had some sorcerer training beforehand so he should be fine so that was nice to hear, at least. But let's move on to episode thirty-seven. Zen Red Scale. What do you? What do you guys? What's what happens in this one? I say. Not. Uh, I mean, there's not. This one's kind of hard to talk about because it's all. It's almost entirely combat. Uh, yeah, it's, it's... Inji and Choso fight. Uh, mm-hmm. I really think the opening to the fight is really funny because um, Yuji like comes down the escalator in slow-mo and Choso looks at him like with just a flat face like oh who's this guy and then he recognizes who it is and he just immediately gets super pissed with all this blood <laughs> shooting out of his face it's really funny looking just the way that it like immediately happens um there's a little bit before this i think where yuji is running through like the streets and the transfigured monsters are attacking people um and he's like oh fuck um but then Inumaki is there, and he's like, "I'll, you know, I'm gonna take care of it." So Yuji runs ahead, and there's a very cool scene where he like flips off the rails and he kicks off a sign. Uh, I really like the motion in that; it was very. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of good uh, motion in this episode. Yes, the, the all the animation in this episode is really good. Yes, fantastic. Uh, which I guess it, if the whole episode is gonna be a battle, it better be. <laughs> but it, yes, you know, I, I agree. Yeah, there's there's not much to this other than the fight. Uh, they get in, they and he ends up seeing Choso. Um, Choso shoots a piercing blood and Yuji goes to block it and he feels it like stab into his arm and you get this like shot of his face where he's like oh fuck (laughs) and he (laughs) deflects it up in the air um they keep fighting for a while and he realizes that he just does not have a shot against this dude because he can't keep up with all like the blood techniques that he's constantly using because he can like manipulate basically he's the guy from the Kyoto school but good is is yes. basically what Choso is, and and this uh, matchup is literally like an injustice. This is a ranged character versus an only up close character. Very yes. very hard matchup to win. <laughs> yes, uh, pretty much every time he gets in close, he gets blasted by something uh, different, like little blood techniques. Um, he manages to avoid serious injuries. He gets a big old gash across his face when he dodges piercing blood at the last second. Um, and then he gets like a little, I don't know what you'd call it, not a phone call, but he gets contacted through the little Mecha Mario earpiece thing. And it's like, a, hey, you need to get the fuck out of there because this guy's going to kill you. I um, call it. I have an idea that, that might work. Uh, go into the bathroom. And so he runs into the bathroom and then he breaks like all the stinks and stuff so that water sprays everywhere. Uh, and that like destabilizes the blood so that... Um, when Choso tries to use the blood outside of his body, it like it, it can't he can't hold it together. It just turns liquidy because of all the yeah. water in it. If you want the full uh, explanation, they literally tell you in the anime while you're watching. They get into the full detail of what happens to blood when exposed yeah, to water. It's like, yeah, it, like it breaks down the blood cells. Walls, yeah, they it, expand. It's the, it's the yeah. typical Jujutsu Kaisen. Listen, this makes sense. Grasshoppers were I, big. I, I promise you, this makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I fe- heavily uh, researched this. Yeah, then Yuji's like, oh, wait a minute. Like, hold on now. I might have a shot here, because Yuji is beating him in hand-to-hand. He's, he's In raw hand-to-hand, he's winning. Um, yeah. 
even though he has a technique where you can use his blood inside of his body to allow him to like have better physicals, um, he's still kind of losing to Yuji, and then he ends up like hiding some blood in his hand so it doesn't get wet, and he condenses it down really far and shoots it through Yuji's liver. Mm-hmm. I don't know why the liver specifically, but that's where he does it. Uh, and that lets him get the upper hand. They fight for a little bit longer, and then he eventually knocks out Yuji. Um, Yuji like went to hit him with a uh, some big cursed energy punch, and then Chosa reveals that he was using blood on that half of his body to like make like armor for himself. Uh, he, so he knocks Yuji out. Sukin is like, ugh guy's a fucking loser uh but then he like opens his eyes up again because he realizes that choso is not finishing him off and he's having like a flashback memory of them at a pic of like him yuji and the other two curse wombs uh, at like a a picnic table eating spaghetti or whatever and then all the other curse wombs that are still in the little vials are like on the table yep um he like shambles away because he has no idea what the fuck is going on and then the two little girls who uh are part of i guess they're high school students i guess they're not little girls but the two girls that are part of ghetto's squad show up and they're like let's get started Mm. dun 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 and that is where it ends uh this episode oh this episode's really good (laughs) a lot of this is like you said fighting but when it's good fighting <laughs> then that puts it next level i have no issues with uh no funny enough there are some how do you feel zen what's better just pure on 22 minute beat down or would you prefer a couple minutes of beat down inner place with cutting back to king kai to see how does he feel about the current situation <laughs> in the fight <laughs> uh yeah it's it's definitely better this way i don't really know why anime is like we need to have a narrator character for all combat always because the audience can't follow combat uh Um, i don't know why i don't know why i think it literally Uh, is to offset the king kai is i feel like that is technically the narrator is king kai without having king kai where if um the... well no like the narrator is fine but i mean like having like a king kai or like brock and Pokemon, oh that's what you mean where, where something so... happens and they have to pan over to this character that's like oh my god this Here... this this that this that and then they cut back to the fight it's like god I, we don't need that oh okay i see what you mean i see what you mean yeah um yeah i don't know why they 100 percent. i always assume it's to give the animators a break where it's like okay uh, we can just have the animation go full on, but then sometimes, occasionally, we just need King Kai here. It's a static shot. <laughs> it's very simple, and he's just going to very quickly explain to everyone what's been going on. But I also assume that was back when it was harder to, like, k- keep up with stuff, if you know what I mean. Even back then in manga, for example, where it's like, it's so easy nowadays to get the previous chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen because of the Shonen Jump archive. But back then, you would have to actually find the old issue of Shonen Jump if you wanted to have that that uh, that week's issue of Shonen Jump to make sense. So you'd actually need the previous Shonen Jump if you had missed it somehow. But then if you if you somehow missed it, and then they would tell you, I guess that's what I'm trying to say is that that's the thing that <laughs> the idea is is because of the way things have changed, we don't need the narrator anymore. It just doesn't make sense to have them anymore. But then you say Brock. I actually don't. Yeah, Brock doesn't make any sense to me either to explain what's going yeah, on in a Pokemon like, fight. Because uh, Pokemon fights are screaming of yeah. like what to do. It's like Pikachu dodge this, and then it cuts to Brock. It's like, oh my god, Pikachu dodge the attack. So now he didn't take any damage. Yeah, it's like, I know. I know that. I know I, that. I literally just watched it. I just watched it happen. Yeah, I would definitely prefer it in the Jujutsu Kaisen sense where the fight is interspersed where if the narrator explains to you how blood and water works. Because that's something I legitimately would not know. Where it's like, oh, okay, would this make sense? And so he, basically they saved me a Wikipedia search <laughs> later on yeah. or, a, or a Google yeah, search. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I don't mind that. Although, the uh, sometimes I wonder, like, do you need to explain? Because like, when I was watching, I obviously don't know what happens to the cell walls of... of... Mm-hmm blood uh mm. when you're like uh exposed to water i have no idea what happens on blood i my assumption was just 
liquidy thing gets water in it and so becomes more liquidy. <laughs> like that's all. Yeah, that that that, I, that was my common sense. But you know, it's to avoid but apparently that. Apparently, there's this chem behind it. So <laughs> exactly, they're explaining the chemical, so it makes sense. So that when that guy online starts like talking shit, you can immediately show. They literally tell you in the episode how this works. Some anime fans have to have it spelled out to them, Zen. Otherwise, they're gonna ha- start spouting some weird shit. Where they just assumed it was it worked like this because of that. That's what I think anyway. But yeah, the I definitely prefer the this money. Though I do again, unless it looks specifically like an old anime. If it's a new anime, I don't want to see that. If it's an old anime, that's different. In which case, it, if it looks like it came from the '90s and King Kai is explaining to me, then that's fine. But there's no reason for <laughs> for Beerus and Weiss to do it. It's super. <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. There's just yeah, yeah. I. I Super, though, is, like, mm. they're just rolling with what they already know from other, like, people like Dragon Ball, so we're gonna do this or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, sure. Fair, fair enough. I'll, I'll give it to I I'll, I'll, I'll understand it, and I will watch it, and I will enjoy it, but it's because it's Dragon Ball. But no, no actual modern new one should have to do that. And yeah, the actual fight itself is very well animated. It even feels like when he's coming in, it's, it's like, if you compare the way he jumps in here... To how the previous episode ended, it feels like there is an immediate jump in quality. It almost feels like, again, that old Dragon Ball where, like, like well, for one scene, Vegeta was just drawn like shit. And then the next one, he's amazingly beautifully detailed. Yes. It, it kind of feels like that to me. Uh, it's like that one episode of Digimon where all of a sudden it has fucking movie quality. And you can't explain why Digimon looks so good. And then the next episode, it returns to looking like normal. It kind of it feels special. Yeah. It's one of those. It's uh it's something that I actually really do like in anime when it happens because it makes it like feel like it's something special that you're watching. I guess the same thing can happen in One Piece where One Piece has had a lot of that recently where it's like, "Oh yeah, they brought in the heavy hitters for this one, so when the next one doesn't look as good as this, you know why?" <laughs> yeah, you know like why it does why they put all the effort into this one. Yeah. I don't really know why it's like I mean, I guess it's just because you don't have all the time in the world to make the thing that you want to make, so you just have to, yeah, you know, pick your battles, have some shit, yeah, yeah. And unless they wanted to delay season two for like another year, <laughs> so to give yeah. to make everything I, yeah. that it's it's <laughs> very tough. Yeah, only so much you can do about it. You mm-hmm. know, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. And the fight itself was amazing. I like the the FPS mode that he 